Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Before I start, I want to ask, are there any Return Peace Corps volunteers in the audience? If you would, just raise your hand. Thank you for your service, everyone. Well, I am very grateful to be invited to speak with you today. And actually, I think I'm double. I guess I'm speaking from this. Um, this is such an exciting occasion. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary, and I know how important it is to celebrate big anniversaries. I'm about the same age, so 50 is a good time. I want to thank Eileen for that warm welcome. Um, Eileen just left us to come here, and uh, she was a tremendous advocate for both AmeriCorps VISTA and for Peace Corps, and we really miss her. Um, I want to thank Wendy, the CEO of the Corporation for National and Community Service. She is a great friend, a tremendous leader, and such a passionate advocate for national service. And it's really always a privilege to be with you. And Paul Montero, where's Paul? There he is right there. Such a dynamic leader of AmeriCorps VISTA. Um, such, it's, it's just great to have you in this important role. And we look forward to so many more opportunities to collaborate. And I've almost forgiven you for taking Eileen from us. <laughs> And now I'm, a, there we go. Am I, is this, oh, it's my first time working this. If I black it out, please forgive me. I might push the wrong button. At Peace Corps, we're really proud to call AmeriCorps VISTA our partner. And I have to say that of all the domestic partnerships, the domestic service partnerships, we really believe that VISTA is our closest ally. Um, we have so many common roots, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But first of all, I think that the most important thing to know is we attract the same kind of people. In fact, sometimes we attract the same people, such as Eileen who you just heard about, served as an AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer and then served as a Peace Corps volunteer. In addition, sometimes we attract, attract each other. So we had Ed Needler, who is a VISTA volunteer, and his wife Lynn, who is a Peace Corps volunteer in Tanzania. So we ought to start a dating service. That would be a really good thing to do. Um, so we have so many things in common. and. There are, I think, some other ways in which we can work together even more closely, which I'm going to talk about in just a few moments. Since its founding, we have heard it said that VISTA is the domestic Peace Corps. But I would like to suggest that today, in this 50th anniversary year, we can say that VISTA is the, that, that Peace Corps is the international VISTA. So we're very proud of our strong ties with uh, AmeriCorps VISTA and indeed with all of, of uh, the Corporation for National and Community Service programs. So as I said earlier, of all the domestic service programs, we really feel the closest kinship with VISTA. Um, in West Africa, there's a saying that we are twin brothers of separate mothers. And in some way, I think this is really very true between VISTA and Peace Corps. Um, we both have the same father, John F. Kennedy. Um, we very much have the same model of integration. We go into a community and we um, live and work among them as members, uh, as family members, as neighbors, as, as close friends. And I do believe very, very firmly that proximity matters, that your presence in the community makes a huge difference in terms of the um, ex lived experience that you're able to have with your community. Now, I was so impressed by some of the things that I heard in the last panel, I just want to mention a few things. One of your panelists said you, she approached her work just like Peace Corps because there were so many similarities. Another really poignant quote, the opportunity chose me. I found myself. Hopefulness is part of the job description. Take a year off from cynicism. All of those things could be said so easily about Peace Corps. And that's because at the very core, the, the experience of service, especially services live within a community of actual living at the level of that community, living on a subsistence budget, using the same public transportation, eating the same food, shopping at the same markets, really validates the community in, in, in a way that I think is difficult to achieve in any other way. And it gives you a credibility that is that I think is really extra special, a bond between the member, the, uh, the VISTA member or the Peace Corps volunteer, and their community. It's, it's really unique. And I loved what I heard our moderator say just now. Entering community is so important. And 
just recognizing what it means and how important it is to honor what already exists. And I think that if you live and work among the people that you serve, you can identify so easily the strengths that already exist there. And then you can also help them to realize their own potential. And in doing so, you, you realize your own potential and you are transformed in the experience. And that is what's unique about our bond that we have. Most of our Peace Corps volunteers say that they got more than they gave. And I would suspect that I asked any, if I asked any of you VISTA or AmeriCorps members what you felt about your experience, you would tell me that you also got more than you gave. And I think that that is the beautiful synergy of service, that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And it's such a privilege to be able to be part of the service community. The story of our volunteers and our members is really the story of dedicated, creative, innovative people. They're not the people that you find in the headlines. They're not the people who will be written about in history books, but they are people that are known and loved by their community for years to come. And I have to tell you that almost every day, even here in Washington, DC, I meet someone whose lives was touched by someone who, who served them. It might be a AmeriCorps volunteer, it might have been a VISTA volunteer, it might have been a Peace Corps volunteer. Practically every taxi ride, I end up talking about national service. And people speak to me really poignantly with tears in their eyes about a person, a volunteer or a, a member who served in their community even 40 years ago. And the bonds of friendship are so strong and that is what is unique about our service opportunity. So I want to tell you for a moment about a few of our volunteers. This is Danielle Guerin of Indiana who served as an AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer in Indianapolis and she worked with some really disadvantaged young people and addressed some of the toughest issues of her time. Things like HIV AIDS, things like drug abuse and about bullying. And that experience as an AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer really led her to want to serve in the Peace Corps. And so now she's serving in Cameroon where she's an agriculture extension worker and she's working with local farmers and their families, helping them to remain healthy, improve their nutrition and helping to link um, their crops with markets where they can get a fair price. So we're so proud of Danielle. Or we have Mike Dixon from Illinois who just returned from his time in Ukraine. He uh, retired from a 40 year career as a professional architect and realized his dream by serving as a Peace Corps volunteer in Ukraine as a community economic development officer. But he had got his start to service. The place where he really started his, his service career was um, his experience with AmeriCorps in New Mexico in the early 60s. So again, it may take some time, may take decades to actually realize the dream, but it's a wonderful thing that double alums I think are really a special group of people. Poverty, as Peace Corps First Director Sergeant Shriver said, is really a responsible responsibility for us all. And I don't think that Sergeant Shriver actually had a formal role with um, VISTA, but he certainly was very much engaged in the discussions about uh, VISTA and was head of the war on poverty. So he must have been really present at the beginning of the program. And um, this is a quote from him. Nobody, he said, who has seen poverty can be satisfied until it is eliminated. And in VISTA, you understand that most Americans how deeply painful poverty is. But I think actually often as I think about poverty and the poverty that we see in developing countries and the poverty you see right here in urban America or in Appalachia or in very r remote rural areas, that the poverty is not the tragedy. What's really a tragedy is lack of dignity, lack of hope and lack of opportunity. And that's what I think our, our members and our volunteers bring is they broaden horizons. They help people to find their own innate potential and they 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 give a boost but what they really do is help communities and help individuals identify what it is within them that is strong and powerful and incredibly wonderful so the topic really today is solutions we're sharing and and I just have three short lessons to share the first is the importance of working together 
I am really, really proud to be part of a, a broad partnership with CNCS on so many levels, but one of the things that's really new and exciting is our Employers of National Service, which creates a talent pipeline between our various service-minded organizations and employers in the private, public, and nonprofit sector. It has so much potential. And as part of that, and I really champion Wendy because she really is the champion of this, um, is just the opportunity to elevate national service and create a new culture norm in our country where service is expected and celebrated and honored and so we're so delighted to be working with you and the employer of national service so lesson number one work together to elevate national service my second uh, whoops not yet um, my second one is Embrace your, your member base. You have a phenomenal group of members, and we do too, a phenomenal group of Return Peace Corps volunteers. For us, our return volunteers are our best advocates, our best recruiters, and our most honest critics. And so I just think for all of us, we need to honor and respect and, um, and hold up our, our alumni base because they are so very important to our mission. And then third, keep your story authentic. What incredibly beautiful stories we heard just now, so powerful. And that is the beauty of our program. We don't need to see anything less than have the, the stories of our members and our volunteers speak for themselves. And we're so lucky now with social media that there are lots of vehicles for sharing authentic stories, not only in an auditorium like this, but you know, globally, really. And I, I've been to the, um, with the website for America Vista and for CNCS, and you guys are so phenomenal at sharing your stories. So I just think that's something we're learning from you, and um, I think it offers so much potential, not only for sharing stories, but also providing citizen feedback to um, programs that we're all working on together, the use of social media to, to provide citizen feedback on some of our programs. So we are at Peace Corps are really thrilled to wish all of you a happy birthday. It's such a privilege to be part of your extended National Service family, and I want to thank you so much for inviting me to join you here today.